Welcome to Winging It. We're playing Arkham Horror the Card Game today, and this is a continuation of my Arkham Horror the Card Game 101 series. This is a playthrough of the Midnight Masks. Uh, we have already done a video on deck building, a video on the mechanics of the first scenario, a video on how to do upgrades, and this will be uh, mechanics that are introduced in uh, Midnight Masks, which is the second scenario of the Core Box campaign. So before I get started, though, I want to explain a little bit about what I've got going on here because it looks a bit different from my first scenario. In the first scenario, I hadn't used a lot of my uh, upgraded components because I wanted it to be a true representation of what the game looks like when you get it out of the box. Uh, but for this, uh, this playthrough and most of the videos on my channel, I wanted to... Uh, use my upgraded components because I think they look nice, they're fun to use, I, I got them for a reason, I enjoy playing with them. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, those components and you know where I've gotten them and you know what I use them for. So uh, one of the very first uh, components that uh, people will often get is they will uh, upgrade from the, 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 the chaos tokens and usually rather than upgrading the chaos tokens themselves, what they'll do is uh, they will put them uh, in coin capsules, and you can get the uh, either the the two five or the two six coin capsules. They'll have a little bit of give if you give them in the two six, um, but that's what I have, and uh, they look a little bit like this. Uh, they look nice. They feel good. They they don't get quite as scuffed when you uh, move them around. I, I will say I played without these for the longest time, and they the um, they they were getting scuffed up, and I uh, you know the the pictures were fading. So uh, it was nice. It was it's a it's a big upgrade in terms of just the, tac the, the tactile feel and uh, the, how, the, how the game feels when you pull the tokens out of the bag. And I, I highly recommend that uh, as an early upgrade if you can. Uh, now, eventually I went to the more expensive. These are Orbits uh, tokens. And you can see an example of what the Orbits tokens look like. And you've seen these featured in my other channels there. These are uh, quite pricey, but they are they're really nice. Um, some people put the coin capsules on these. Some people, uh, here's a you know one with a picture on it, the auto fail, <laughs> um, and uh, some people put the coin capsules on these. I like playing with them, you know, just without without the protection, and they haven't been too scuffed up, and um, I think they they felt great. So um, again, that's that's a, that's a really nice upgrade when you're really into this game, uh, and and we've certainly enjoyed playing them. I, I enjoy playing them on my videos, uh, in my four player group, when I play with my wife. You know, we, we uh, have really liked those. Um, so the next kind of very obvious upgrade, um, well, first of all, I already talked about the connectors, and that was actually the first thing I got. Those are from uh, By the Same Token. Um, I also, uh, uh, Orbitz also has a, a similar looking product made of, of a different material with a kind of a different design. Uh, and there are various other connectors that you can get, but I really like these ones from uh, from By the Same Token. They also make ones that are like reversible. They have one-way connectors on one side and two ways on the other. Um, so uh, I, I like those. Um, the These uh, trays here that I have are um, from a company called uh, Team Covenant. Um, they also offer a subscription service if you just want new packs delivered to your door. Uh, and I enjoy that. But for the components, um, they have... Uh, these, which you can put damage and horror uh, into these trays and keep track of them. Um, they make these uh, resource tokens, which are nice. The doom tokens are really nice. They're they're one doom on one side, two doom on the other side, and I use so like I use use those. Um, and then like the the clue tokens are clues on one side and resources on the other. Uh, so that's Team Covenant. Um, by the same token, uh, who I mentioned earlier, they also they're in the UK. They make uh, a similar product. Uh, and I also know that Orbitz, there he hasn't made trays yet, but I do, do know that he has made damage and horror tokens, uh, and I believe they fit into the Team Covenant trays, uh, you, you know, if that's uh, something that uh, you're interested in. So there are other things out there, but uh, these are uh, the, you know, the, the ones that I use and that I've seen be quite popular. Uh, the other kind of notable... Uh, you know, thing that I play with is this playmat. I have this Eager for Death playmat. Eager for Death is a piece of art that is from uh, the the Witch Legacy, and uh, I definitely uh, I, I enjoy this one. I enjoy the art. Uh, 
the, the card is kind of painful, but we'll get to that eventually. Um, but the art is really great. And um, actually, I had this custom made. There is no play mat that you can buy commercially available with that art. But I went out and I contacted the artist and found his art and downloaded it and used Inked Gaming to uh, to print this. I asked the artist if it would be okay. He said that was fine. So I'm, try I'll, of course, always trying to, uh, you know, respect the artist and, uh, you know, make sure it's okay with him before I would go off and print his stuff. So uh, it's one of the reasons I featured it a lot is in uh, my videos. I just really enjoy it. This mat down here is from an invocation event. Um, it's uh, invocation events are uh, kind of local game store events that, uh, that Fantasy Fight provides kits. And at least in the last two years, they've given uh, play mats, you know, along with. Um, there are, are some custom play mats that you can also download and print um from uh from like etsy and those kinds of the places uh there's a question of whether you get them with the slots or without the slots uh, printed on them i prefer them without the slots uh because like a lot of times you won't use your arcane slots or or you'll need an extra ally slot or you know i, I just find the space is better utilized if you just you know use a plain play mat i do enjoy the slots i have the um the the big four player mat that um, it is. It doesn't. It really is just for the common area, but it's the uh, Countless Terrors map. Love it. It's beautiful. You've probably seen it in my upgrade videos, um, and that one has the slots drawn in for the encounter cards and such. And I, I do enjoy that. So those are the play mats. And then finally, um, the the real money drain is uh, these miniatures. I have Roland and Wendy here. Instead of using uh, the cards, um, here is a here's a nice here's a nice look at Roland, and uh, here is Wendy. So these are from um, these are from Hero Forge painted. I painted both of these actually. My wife does a better job at, at painting than I do, but I painted both of those. Um, those are from Hero Forge. They're my own design. I am planning on. Uh, I, it's been asked because I, ha I have a bunch of those uh, to put my designs up for other people who might be interested. Um, they are pricey. Uh, and uh, we only got started on that because some friends of ours that we play Arkham Horror with uh, gave us two. They gave us uh, Ursula and Yorick and painted those and loved them so much I just started buying a few every month. And then I also actually managed to win um, the first season of the League of Extraordinary Investigators, which is kind of an online competition where people see how many victory points they can get. And um, Vase Odin of the Twisted Tentacle Inn, uh, he offered up a prize, uh, which was a gift certificate to Hero Forge, and that got me a bunch of, of the investigators as well. Um, he's a very generous guy, is uh, constantly giving Arkham stuff away on his uh, site, so you might want to check out that. That's Twisted Tentacle Inn. Uh, anyway, so I have all the investigators except for six as of uh, you know the recording of this video, which is, is pretty cool, um, but it's certainly not a cheap endeavor. So I say all of that to say, if you're new to this game, um, I wouldn't be getting into any of that. I would focus on getting more cards, you know, getting, especially getting two cards and getting, two cores and getting the Dunwich Legacy Deluxe Box like will really get you set up to be able to play this game and you know and investing in, in cards after that and in scenarios and that's you know I, I invested in this stuff after you know I caught up and you know was, was pretty current with things so anyway uh, that's a little bit about my upgrades let's talk about the scenario and uh, the mechanics and, and all of that so the uh, the story uh, we're at is after we got out of our house um, we chose not to burn it down um, and there are some story spoilers for why I wouldn't want to do that um, so we don't have Lita Chandler in our in our deck I did not want to take a trauma with uh, with um, Roland because of his low sanity uh, so that's kind of the driving reason behind want, not wanting to do that um, and uh, even though Lita is a very good asset, and I don't plan on, uh, well, I won't give spoilers for the last scenario. Um, so that's where we're at we're here. Uh, Lita has let us know that um, there is this cult, uh, there, a lair uh, has been destroyed, and we're supposed to go and find uh, some cultists, and we're going to run out Arkham and see if we can find them. Now, a little bit uh, about this scenario is, this is a scenario that has an objective to find uh, up to six cultists. And one mistake I, I see new players make is thinking that this is a win or lose thing. You get all six or you lose. And just to be very clear, getting all six cultists is very, very rare. I have done it three times in ever <laughs> playing uh, in this game and usually with a wider card pool uh, than than what I'm playing with now. So uh, I just 
I would say like three is a good target. Four is where you're, you're really pushing ahead. It's setting you up well for the next scenario. Five is excellent. And then six is you just got lucky, smashed with the deck, and probably made some good choices along the way. Um, so this is a scenario that you definitely want to bail out of early. You want to use the resign option, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, before the Doom runs out. Uh, and be okay with just getting, you know, uh, three cultists or even two cultists, you know, whatever you can get. Uh, so that's a little bit about that. I will say this scenario is on difficulty level is about uh, average difficulty for what you will experience in this game uh, normally. The first scenario is easier than most scenarios in Arkham Horror. The last scenario of the core campaign is harder. Uh, it, I would say it competes for being one of the hardest scenarios in the game to date. There's a few standalones that also are, are very hard and people would argue about, but it's, it's a very, very hard scenario. So, okay. So that's where we're at. Um, as I mentioned, we've done deck upgrade videos. There is a deck upgrade video in the link below. Um, that deck upgrade video also will discuss kind of the mechanics of leveling up decks and how that mechanic works in this game. So without further ado, let's uh, go ahead and get started. We will drop opening hands. Uh, Roland gets five cards, two, three, four, five. We're looking for definitely a weapon um, and maybe some clue tech. And a B cup would be great. Okay, so we got the 45 automatic. Well, we got the machete, even better. Dynamite blast, we definitely do not need. Magnifying glass could help us get clues. Um, so I may I may hold on to that. Um, I don't think we want the dodge. I'm going to go ahead and toss the 45 automatic. Uh, do I hang on to the magnifying glass? I think I will. Okay. So we will draw three more cards. Okay. Oh, amnesia. Well, we get we get to replace this right away because it's a weakness. And guts and a vicious blow. And we draw, oh, a shotgun. Okay, well, I think the shotgun is not something we're gonna be playing right away. So the idea with having a big weapon like that is that we're gonna whip it out when a big enemy that we've gotta really wrestle with shows up or that we know is gonna show up. All right, Wendy, we're looking for some clue tech. We're looking for Leo DeLuca. That's kind of what we want. Um, so we can, uh, again, replace immediately our weakness. All right, evasion tech is not that useful. Look what I found, definitely useful. Um, I think I'm gonna keep the emergency cash so we can potentially pay for stuff. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to keep the Unexpected Courage because I want to go to the graveyard and I know that's going to require a test. So we'll, keep, we'll throw away the other two. I'd like to get Leo, but... Okay, we got Wendy's Amulet and a Backstab. So, interesting. We'll see how that goes. So I have not played Wendy a lot. I don't know that I've ever gotten her when her amulet out or if i have it was for very briefly and wasn't very effective so we're going to see how good i am at uh, actually using that amulet i suppose all right so a little bit about the setup we do have um the the uh the house in play that's uh, happens because we didn't burn down the house otherwise we'd start in central in river town south side and downtown are randomized there's two versions of each of those because we're starting two player which is two-handed, two-player, right? We start with an Acolyte with a Doom on it in Southside. So let's talk about the mechanic of enemies or non-agenda things and have Doom on them. This counts towards the Doom Threshold. Our Doom Threshold, which I'll show in just a second, is six. So if we had five Doom on the agenda and we checked the Doom Threshold, this would count toward it and we would uh, advance. When you, you know, remove the, when you defeat the Acolyte, that doom goes away, so that's uh, <clears throat> that's something that we have to manage, and and you'll see that in this that's one of the me main mechanics of this scenario is that you're going to be spawning these cultists who I guess they're doing the rituals and you know they're trying to advance uh, the, you know bad stuff from happening and you know generating doom and you have to go and stop that and manage that, uh, so that is uh, you know something to to really pay attention to and, and managing it well. There are cards like mysterious chanting that will put more doom out. So um, that is how, oh, and the other thing is 
if we had, say, if it's a 16 threshold and then a Acolyte comes out with a Doom on it, we don't immediately advance. You only check the Doom threshold in two cases. Uh, at the end of, right after you put Doom on the agenda, then you have a check, you know, for, uh, check the Doom threshold. So that would do it. The other thing is, is if a card on it says this card, this can cause the agenda to advance, then you would make another check. Like Ancient Evils has that, uh, that text on it. So an Ancient Evils could cause you to advance outside of that normal, you know, period in which you would check. All right, so let's take a look at the act and agenda, or the agenda first and the act. So this says, Predator or Prey. Lita seems convinced of a conspiracy within the city of Arkham. She believes that a secret cult serves the ghouls that live in the crypts beneath the city, and that several of the cult's prominent members are scattered throughout Arkham. As you begin searching for them, you can't shake the feeling that you too are being hunted. Action. Resign. You don't want to risk taking too long, so you head out to safety with the information you've gathered. So that little, that arrow is an action arrow. It means you have to take an action to do it. Um, this resign is one of the actions along with parley, fight, and evade that does not provoke an attack of opportunity. Um, so resign has kind of, the word itself may make you feel like it's, it's giving up or it's not the... Um, you know, it's not the best course of action. But one of the things this scenario is intending to teach you is that resign is a valid option, and it's almost always better to resign uh, than to let the the do the scenario end by dooming out. Uh, so that is resign is always an option. It's one you should take, and it's definitely one you should take in this case with this scenario rather than letting it doom out. So you get as many cultists as you can, and then you resign. You gotta make sure that you leave an action to resign. If you've used all three of your actions in turn, you're gonna have to go through another mythos phase before you have the option to resign. The act is uncovering this conspiracy. You have one night to find the members of the cult and unveil their plot. The more members of their cult you can find and interrogate before midnight, the better. Action. The investigators spend two clues per investigator as a group. So that's four clues. They draw the top card of the cultist deck. That is a deck over here. It has random cultists in it. Find as many unique cultist enemies as you can and add them to the victory display. If there are six unique cultist enemies in, in the victory display, advance. Note, not all six of them are in the cultist deck, which we know because there are only five in the cultist deck. Now, I'm just going to, I don't know how many people have gotten this one wrong, so I will just go ahead. This was an error I made the first time I played. This Acolyte right here, it is a cultist, but it is not a unique cultist. If it was a unique cultist, it would have a little asterisk up here by its name, and it does not. So when it says unique cultist, see, I thought it was like, okay, well, I have an Acolyte. Let me just put him in the victory display. And honestly, he wouldn't go into the victory display anyway, because it doesn't say victory on him. So... Um, the, the, what you're looking for is these cultists, they have um, the, uh, the asterisk up by their name. That means they're unique, just like the you know, unique assets in your own deck would have that little asterisk to make it mark it as unique. Um, and they would have victory on it to show that it goes into the victory display. So that is where we're at. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're looking at our first location here is your house. Okay. So forced. Okay. When the ghoul priest spawns, well, the ghoul priest is not going to spawn because we killed the ghoul priest. So good on us. Um, but he would spawn here because uh, he gets shuffled into the deck if um, you uh, <clears throat> if you didn't defeat him. Okay. It has an action. Draw one card and gain one resource. Limit once per turn. That limit once per turn is once per turn per investigator. It would say group limit once per turn if it was for the entire group. So both Wendy and Roland could do this. It's a two clue, two shroud location. So one thing I will mention. Um, so we have to take that that action to uh, to spawn a cultist. You have to have four clues. This is something that we want to do, and it's a, we want to do it because. Um, you don't want to hold on to clues because there is a uh, treachery called false lead that can easily make you drop all your clues and lose a lot of progress. Um, the other thing I'll mention is this draw one card, get one act, uh, draw one card, get one resource for an action. That might not sound like a great deal, but it's actually a pretty good deal. It's action compression. You're getting multiple things done quicker than you normally could because drawing a card is an action, drawing a resource is 
taking your resources in action, being able to do both at once, that's a, a pretty good deal. So something we'll probably take advantage of. All right, so um, I am gonna start with Wendy, and the first thing I'm gonna do is take advantage of that draw one card, get one resource. So she will draw a card, and she gets a lucky, nice. And she gets this resource, so she's at six resources. Okay. So now we are going to investigate at 3v2. Now we are under committing here uh, because uh, if, if she fails, I can play two resources and play look what I found. Uh, and if I fail a skill, by two, uh, a skill test by two or less while investigating, you can discover two clues. So she might be able to pick up both of these clues. Or you know, she might uh, actually succeed by under committing and get one clue. Either one way is a good, a good way for uh, us to get clues. So here we go. We're at 3v2. Okay, this is... Uh, number highest number of doom on a cultist enemy in play, which is negative one. Okay, um, let me go ahead and break and talk about the, these tokens because and how they affect our game. I should have I should have done this earlier, but so as the doom gets out on the cultist, that's going to make these skulls worse. And in general, in this game, skulls are the thing that like kind of progressively gets worse as the scenario goes on. That's kind of their their thing. Um, cultists are negative two. Place one doom on the nearest cultist enemy. Um, which is going to happen. If you pull that, you're going to be at generating doom, which is why we want to clear the board from the cultists if we can. Finally, notice that the tablet is negative three. If you fail, place one of your clues on your location. Well, that negative three is adding a negative three into the bag. So now there are two negative threes, meaning that going from negative two up to three up is actually buying us two tokens, not just one token. So it means that it's actually pretty good for us to be three up, and we probably would prefer to be three up. Uh, on most of our tests. Okay, so we got this clue because of you know our how we uh, how we committed there. Um, I do I want to under commit again, like to spend two resources to get one clue. Um, let me see if Roland's got anything he can throw at this test. He doesn't really. So I don't know that I just want to be too up. Well, we've got the lucky actually, so we could use lucky for this if we fail. So. I think we'll go ahead and we'll just investigate up by one and then we were just lucky to get that last clue. Okay, skull again. So I think this is right here just showing the value of, normally I would not want to take a test one up, not with that kind of bag, but because Survivor has all these skills to mitigate, mitigate failure, it becomes actually a pretty strong play to do that. So um, it's it's just showing kind of what Survivor's identity is. All right. Well, <clears throat> Roland also wants to take care, uh, take advantage of this. Get a card, get a resource. So uh, when he's taking hearts returns, he's going to get a card, which is perception. Great. And he'll take a resource. Now his one of his one of his goals is going to be to come in here and, and kill this acolyte. He can with his ability he can get a clue at that location. So killing enemies is definitely something he wants to do, but he can't really do it this turn uh, because he just doesn't have the actions to get up there and take a swing. So we took our first action was to do that. Second action will be to move into Rivertown. Okay, which is a one shroud two clue location. Okay. And it's also noticed that it's marked central. Um, that that there are some times that uh, various mechanics will reference central, and so if it does, we know that it's talking about this location. So Roland is going to now, for his last action, spend three and go ahead and put out his machete. So feeling pretty good about that. All right, so that now we're uh, through with the investigate phase. We're gonna move into upkeep. Roland will draw a dynamite blast. That's certainly aggressive. And, okay, Wendy will get a sneak attack. So we've got some nice events between a sneak attack and a backstab that she could do some combat, especially if we put her um, her amulet out and are able to recur those. All right, so now we are at two of six doom. And 
and we will draw a Rotting Remains. Okay, so this is kind of one that Roland does not like because it can give him a lot of horror. It's a uh, three uh, willpower test, and for each point you fail by, you take three horror. Um, so he can, he can commit guts to this. I really don't want to take horror. I want to be up by three. I'm going to also commit Dynamite Blast to this. So he is up by three. And if we succeed, we get to draw a card, which is a good thing. All right, minus one, we pass. So he gets to draw a card from Guts. And he gets Amnesia, choose all in this card. Okay, well, we're just going to rip that right off. Um, so which of these cards do we want to get rid of? Uh man. Uh, I think, uh, man, do I want to get rid of that shotgun? We spent all that on it. But the vicious blow is so good. Um, I think I think I'm gonna keep the shotgun because it's fun, and that's really not a very good way to play this game. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna keep the shotgun. Okay, so now it is Wendy's turn. At least we got that amnesia out of the way. All right. Well, she's got Crypt Chill. Test for willpower. If you fail. Uh, you have to discard one asset you control. She controls no assets, so she would take two damage instead. Um, she's probably okay on taking the damage, honestly. So I'm just going to have her go at 4v4, and uh, we're just going to like ex accept that we're going to fail this test. Oh, well... When, when the bag smashes you in the face, there's not much you can, you know, that's, that's a fine thing. This is actually a card that's really bad, you know, for like Guardians hate, like they get their big weapon out there, like a shotgun, and then you lose it. And, you know, that's no good. I think, um, okay, so as for this round, I do know that one of the things that Southside can do is let you search the deck for an ally. And if it, it, it is that, then Wendy wants to go there and look for a Leo. Because having those extra actions would be huge. So, Roland's going to open that up first. He's going to move in, south side, and we'll see what it is. Okay, it is not the one. It's a draw three cards, limit once per game, which is still a pretty good effect. And um, Roland uh, and each investigator could do that. So, no, it doesn't get uh, Leo out, but it does allow you to fill your hand up with cards. And Roland may want to do that because... You know, he just lost all his cards. All right, so anyway, we get uh, two clues here. So Roland is going to attack the Acolyte. He doesn't really have a lot. He's going at uh, 5v3, adding the plus one combat on the machete. Let's, uh, we don't really have a way to boost it, so let's just hope he's going to do good. 5v3. Okay, minus 2, place a Doom on the nearest cultist. So, important timing thing. You resolve the token effects before you resolve the test. So, um, it doesn't really matter since he's the only cultist, but actually the way this works is that he gets the extra Doom from the token effect, and then he dies. Okay, now because we killed, uh, we defeated an enemy at this location, Roland can get a clue. We have one action left. We're going to go ahead and take this once per game action to draw three cards, fill his hand back up. Now, some of the advice you'll sometimes hear in this game is don't draw as your last action, which is it's it's a it's a good guideline as it goes, but I wouldn't put too much stock in it. If you can avoid drawing as your last action, then cool, but you know, if you need to just do it. Like don't play too scared. Um, that's my advice anyway. The reason people will say that is because like if you get a if you get a weakness right at the end of your turn. It can really hurt you. You won't be able to react to it. Uh, in this case, there's only one weakness in our deck that uh, left, and it's not one that is going to uh, cause us, like, it's not going to be any different drawing at the end of our turn versus the beginning of the turn. That's Roland's cover-up. So, yeah, we're going to draw three cards. We get Deduction, okay, that's some Clue Acceleration, Dodge, and Unexpected Courage. Okay, so we filled up our hand nicely, and we've got a Clue. 
Uh, Wendy would like to get one more clue so she can spawn a cultist. So I do think we're going to go in, try to get uh, the clues at Rivertown, and uh, then we're probably going to go into the uh, into the graveyard. So uh, Wendy will move into Rivertown. She will investigate up by two. If we fail, we're going to play Look What I Found to get both clues. If we don't, we're just going to be happy we got a clue. Actually, uh, before she goes, she will... No, I think I'm not going to do the action resource because after I get a clue, I want to be able to spawn a cultist so that we're not dropping clues from uh, false lead. So 3v1. All right, zero. She got a clue. And now we will spend all four of our clues. It takes an action. That action, again, is on, uh, is on the act. So it applies wherever they are. And we will spawn this cultist. Okay, it is Herman Collins. He spawns at the graveyard. Well, that is actually pretty fantastic. Uh, because uh, we're right there. Wendy can go in and just get him. So um, he spawns at the graveyard. He's a 3-4-4. Four, four. Um, you can choose and discard four cards from your hand. Parlay. Add Herman Collins to the victory display. So if, if, if Wendy can find four cards that she wants to get rid of, she can just uh, parlay him and uh, get rid of him. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to draw cards, do upkeep. Roland will get an evidence. Okay, this is nice. If we can spawn a cultist um, at a good location, he can get two clues, one from his ability and one from evidence. He gets another resource. And Wendy will get Guts and a resource. Okay, excellent. All right, we are now at two of six Doom, where we just were, right? Because we had a cultist last time. All right, Roland will get Locked Door. Attach the location with the most clues. Um, the attached location cannot be investigated. Test for fight to break down the door or for evade or to uh, agility to pick the locks. So we can actually choose, since there are two locations with one clue. I'm gonna go ahead and say south side, um, just because it's the, it's the, you know, I can, this is an easier clue to invest, to um, location to investigate. So um, I probably am not gonna bother with getting this one last clue. I probably don't need it, so. Wendy will get Okay, Hunting Shadow, you must either choose one, spend one clue, or take two damage. You have to choose um, an option that will change the game state. Uh, and since she has no clue to spend, she's going to have to take the two damage. So she will do that. The other thing to notice about this is it has this Peril keyword. Peril means that, um, that I cannot discuss it with anybody else at the table, which, you know... In my own head, I just have to keep it separate, I suppose. Uh, but also that if, if it had, and the reason that's relevant here is because there's choice, right? You can't sit there and be like, okay, guys, what do you think? Is it worth me, you know, taking the two damage here? Or is it okay if I just get rid of a clue, right? That's, that's a conversation that cannot happen because this has peril on it. Um, but the other thing peril would mean is if there was a test on this, like a willpower test or agility test or whatever, that um, Roland would not be able to commit cards if he was at the location to, to help. He wouldn't be able to commit a card or if somebody had like word of protection that allows you to cancel um and they're not and you know they can't cancel somebody else's treachery that has peril on it you could you could cancel your own treachery that has peril on it so that's a little bit about the the peril keyword okay so i think wendy is going to move in and she'll be ditching cards all right wendy will move into the graveyard first action Okay, <clears throat> the graveyard says, Forced, after you enter the graveyard, test three willpower. If you fail, you must either take two horror or move to Rivertown. And there are four clues and a victory point one, so we want to clear this location. And Herman Collins immediately engages her. And if she fails this willpower test and has to go back to Rivertown, or she decides not to take the horror, he still goes with her because he's already engaged with her and in, is in her threat area. She's going to commit guts to this test which puts her at uh, 6v3. Three up is really is, is really good. All right, zero. So she passes. We get to replace Guts, because that's the way it works. And she draws a backstab. 
Okay. So potentially we could backstab Herman, <laughs> but uh, let's see, we, uh, I don't think we want to do that. We have to pick four cards we want to get rid of. Let's put the four clues on the graveyard. Remember the parlay action does not invoke an attack of opportunity. Getting a cultist right into the victory display is huge for us. So I don't think we need both backstabs. Um, we do, I do want to keep the sneak attack. Um, unless we were going to just play Wendy's amulet. Hmm. Okay. Uh, get rid of the emergency cash. We, I think we'll get rid of the unexpected courage and the lucky. And that's four cards we're discarding to parlay him, and then he just goes straight into the victory display. So we got one of our uh, of our six cultists, so we're on track to do pretty well. So our first action was to move in, second action was to parlay. Third action, we are going to investigate. We still have this look what I found, but we are at 3v1. If we fail, we can pick up two clues. Okay, uh, that's zero. So we get a clue. All right, now Roland is a little bit not sure what to do because because he doesn't have any enemies to kill to kind of to get resources. Um, we could start drawing. We could uh, play this deduction to get two clues off of a location so we can uh, spawn. I think what he's going to do is go get the the one off of Rivertown. Although I don't know, Wendy could get that one pretty easily. So maybe. I know that there's a high shroud in Miskatonic University. We potentially end up committing a lot of cards to do that. Okay, I'm going to draw a card because I want to see if I can get an intellect icon or a magnifying glass or some kind of clue tech, and then we'll we'll go from there. So he's going to draw, okay, a beat cop. Well, a beat cop is even better. <laughs> so we'll spend four resources to play beat cop. All right. And then I think from there I'm going to... Um, <clears throat> And this is the upgraded B-Cop, so I can actually, uh, he has extra damage and horror soak. You can also uh, use a free trigger to uh, exhaust him and deal one damage to him and one damage to somebody else. So it's really good, but it also means he's attacking at a much higher. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go to St. Mary's Hospital, um, because I know it's a lower shroud, and I would prefer to have an enemy spawn at a higher shroud location like Miskatonic University. Um, and then he could get, you know, uh, clues from... Uh, from defeating an enemy there. So he'll move to the St. Mary's Hospital, okay, which has two clues, two shroud, and it has a, a, an action to heal three damage once per game. So I'll put the two clues there, and then he could probably get away with playing a deduction here to grab both those clues, and then they could spawn another cultist, which would be fantastic. All right, so we have one clue, but maybe we can get enough next turn. All right, so upkeep, Roland will draw. A vicious blow, always good. I'd like to get that extra ammunition, then I'll feel good about playing the shotgun. Of course, we need resources to play the shotgun too. Okay, Wendy's got a perception, so that'll be nice when we're looking at kind of a higher shroud location. And she's got a lot of resources, but we're probably gonna spend a lot once, uh, she can be very spendy once we start actually playing her events, and I've got her amulet to recur some events. Uh, and I would still like to find Leo. All right, we are at three of six doom. And we get Obscuring Fog. Attach to your lo okay, location limit, once per location. Uh, attached location gets plus two shroud. After attached location is successfully investigated, discard Obscuring Fog. So that's going to make this a four shroud. That is less than ideal. And we have to decide how much we want to commit to getting those clues. Wendy will get a, a locked door attached to the location with the most clues. Okay, well that's her location. So we've done this before. So she's gonna have to beat a four agility test, and I don't know how she's going to do that actually. Um, we need to be able to boost her a little bit higher. Hmm, that hurts a lot. 
Boy, this just really smacked me good. I could commit her amulet, but man, I really do not want to do that. I need her amulet. Okay, we're going to draw for agility icons for Wendy. Oh, this is such a such a killer. She's going to draw, and she gets a sneak attack. Not good. She's going to draw again. Oh, elusive. Okay, well, we can pitch the elusive and the backstab. Two really good cards. But anyway, we're pitching the, the uh, elusive and the backstab to do this block door. We are two up, and she has the ability to redraw if she doesn't like the token. So this is consuming our whole turn here. Minus four. Okay, well, she's going to pitch her perception to redraw a token. Zero. Okay, locked door is gone, but that ate her whole turn. That was particularly brutal. Okay, so what's Roland going to do? I think we can pitch the unexpected courage and the evidence. That'll get him to three, four, five, six to beat four is still no good. I think we're gonna have to, I don't want to invest this evidence into trying to get clues. So we're gonna draw a card, extra ammunition. Okay, well that is good for making the shotgun more viable. I don't want to pitch it for an icon. I'll draw one more card looking for an, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, we're gonna have to ditch a card. I think we just have to, well, because what I'm worried about is if I throw everything at this and get the two clues, I, I could end up uh, getting the false lead. So, oh man, this has just been, it's been a bad time. All right, I'll draw another card. Emergency cash. I guess the last action will play the emergency cash, and then at least we're set up to be able to play the shotgun. Ooh. Man, this, this this is killing me. All right, Roland and Upkeep will draw a dodge. Wendy will get Haunted. Okay, she gets negative one to all her skills. We can take two actions to a discard Haunted. She gets a resource. All right, we're at four or six doom. Roland will get an acolyte. Well, finally, something something good. All right, <laughs> I say something good because Roland can kill this guy. He gets uh, a, uh, I guess I should go over, we had one before, but I didn't really talk about it. He's a three, one, two, and you can put him in any empty location, any empty location after the acolyte enters play, place one doom on it. So he's gonna be here generating doom. All right, and then uh, Wendy's going to get frozen in fear. Uh, at the end of turn, you have to do a willpower test. First time you perform one of the following actions, move, fight, or evade. It costs one additional action. All right, so Wendy will go first. She's just going to clear Haunted. Two actions. Um, that was not a move, fight, or evade. She's going to investigate. Okay, she is... Uh, up by two. Okay, that is negative two, place one doom on the nearest cultist. So she got a clue. All right, so she has two clues and this doom gets, this cultist gets a doom. So we gotta kill him or else we're advancing, which it won't be a problem. All right, so um, Roland will move in and we'll look at the Miskatonic University. Okay, it's four clues. Four shroud. It has an action. Search the top six cards of your deck for a tome or spell card and add it to your hand. Shuffle the deck. That's relevant for Daisy or Agnes, not us. It's a victory point location, so we want to clear it of clues. Now here, I'm trying to think. I could just ping him with the beat cop, and we would get two clues, and then we would still have 
an action left to spawn a cultist. So I think we're going to do that. So we what we do is we exhaust Beat Cop, put a damage on him, and then we put a damage on the, on the Acolyte, which defeats him. Then we can spend one resource to play um, Evidence, which is fast. Play after you defeat an enemy, discover one clue at your location. So we get one of those four clues that I haven't put out there yet. We'll take one and put two clues, three clues there. Okay, so we got three clues there. And then uh, we get a clue from Roland's special ability. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and spend the four resources to spawn another cultist. So maybe we can catch up a little bit here. Now notice they don't have to be together. It, it just says uh, spend four clues, two, clu clu two clues per investigator. Um, and it's the, the action for that is on the act. So we don't have, they don't have to be co-located to do that. Okay, so we got uh, Victoria Devereaux. She is a 3-3-2. Uh, she spawns at Northside, uh, which is one location away from him, uh, from Roland. And you can also spend five resources to parlay and add her to the victory display. So she goes here. I think we would rather defeat her though, because you know we can get a, then we can get a clue at that location. So we will plan to move in and attack her next turn. Meanwhile, what are we going to do this turn? So we are we. I wish we just had one more intellect icon. We could move in there and be you know set up for next turn. Um, and just play the dodge. I don't know that I really want that to happen. I hate to commit a deduction going only two up, which is what uh, unexpected courage plus deduction would put me only two up uh, to get those two clues. And again, it's a situation where we might um, end up dropping the clues. So I think I prefer to. I think I'm going to go in and do the dodge play. And just waste, you know, use the dodge. Although maybe we just even take eat the damage. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Roland will move in. Victoria Devereaux will come on to him, and we'll look at this location. I'm just trying to be as efficient with my actions as possible. Taking damage isn't great, but not ha you know, uh, what am I going to do? Draw a card, get a resource. I feel like this is the better play, so that I'm I'm set to do something good next turn. Um, so this is a three. Uh, there are four clues here, victory point one, there are, it's a three shroud, and uh, you can spend five resources to gain two clues from the token pool. So, she is on us, she will hit us in the enemy phase. Actually, I don't think I'm gonna take the dodge because like, taking a damage is not a big deal, now that I think about it. All right, there's four clues here. We'll be able to get at least one of these when we kill her. So, that's pretty good. Okay, so that's that. We will uh, upkeep. Roland will get another deduction. That's kind of interesting. Okay, six resources. Wendy will get a flashlight. Very, very good for getting clues. And a resource. All right, and we are now at five of six doom. Now, I'll make a point about five of six doom. This is what uh, some people lovingly call the witching hour if i'm correct that was a drawn to the flame uh, invented term but i could be wrong the podcast drawn to the flame witching hour is uh the time when the doom when the, we're going to advance the agenda anyway and so if i if a cult is spawns and has doom on it we don't really care that much because it's that doom is not going to push us over the threshold getting a, you know, that'll that'll no matter what we're advancing so we can pretty much ignore doom and if there's some mystics have some effects that will put doom on their own cards this is the time to play those uh in the core box arcane initiate is you know kind of the example of that so that's that's the witching hour when people refer to it okay uh roland will get an acolyte well there you go case in point so i'm going to put the acolyte back here uh, because I want to kill him and get a clue off that high shroud location, so that's good. Um, and again, the doom doesn't matter because we're going to advance anyway. And then Wendy will get. Oh, we did not. We forgot to test this uh, frozen of fear last time, so we have to go ahead and test it. I was. I had no way to really boost it, so I'm just going to go at four v three. Um, 
However, there was the, um, if we remember correctly, there was two doom on that uh, acolyte. So that will make the skulls cause her to fail. All right, negative one. So we were at 4v3. That frozen of fear goes away, but the frozen of fear we just drew stays. Okay. Um, Wendy could probably get those clues and then potentially spawn another cultist. Yeah, so I think we want to, we want to have Roland go first. Roland is going to hit her. He is at four, five from the V-Cop and six from the machete. We get six V3, and I think we will commit the vicious blow. Vicious blow will make seven V3. Actually, we're not going to commit the vicious blow. We'll just use beat cop. So six V3 is good. I want to save the vicious blow. All right, minus one. So she takes two damage. We will put a damage on Beat Cop and move her into the victory display. So now we've got two cultists in the victory display. And that, that Beat Cop is a free trigger, doesn't take an action. So we have two actions left. And we get a clue from Roland's ability. So I think what we will do is we will investigate. We're at 3v3. We will uh, use unexpected courage and two deductions. We'll get us to three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, I don't think I want to do that. We'll save that play for later. Instead, we're going to spend five resources. Three. Yeah. Oh, which brings us down to one. And we will play the good old shotgun. So shotgun is your core box big weapon. Um, it starts with two ammo. You can spend one ammo. Fight, you get plus three for this attack for each point you succeed by uh, to a minimum of one. Uh, you, you do damage to a minimum of one to a maximum of five. So, yeah, we get a, we get a lot of damage by, by hitting very hard. This does replace the machete because it's a two-handed weapon, and it has two on it. So, All right. Let's see. So I think I will do the big deduction play, actually. Uh, so I'm at 3v3, and I would do with the... Uh, I want to keep that unexpected courage, though. Hmm. I think we we'll, may just grab a resource. I want the unexpected courage so I can overshoot with the shotgun. But the, I do want to get a clue here, actually. Maybe it's okay. So we could go to three, four, five. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So uh, one, two, three, four. We're uh, going at seven v three. Can make these deductions. This deduction, uh, if this uh, skill test is successful while investigating a location, discover one additional clue at that location. So we would actually get all three clues if we're successful here. We're going at seven v three. Okay, so we are successful. We get all three clues. So I, there actually is a reason I'm doing that. This is kind of a spoiler, but I'll go ahead and give you my, my reasoning. Is I want the enemy that's about to spawn to spawn with Roland, and he's going to spawn to the person with the most clues. Um, I want Wendy to be able to get clues, and so if she gets too many clues, that's going to cause you know him to spawn way over here. But I, I have the shotgun out for a reason, so... That's, that's kind of explaining. Sorry for the spoilers. I'm hoping that you've played this before. Okay. Wendy is going to investigate up by two. Get a clue. Minus one. Okay. She gets a clue. She is going to investigate up by two to get this clue. Zero. Wendy has given some good draws here. 
Okay, and then she will take an action to spawn another cultist because we don't, again, false lead can cause people to drop clues. We want Roland to end up with the most clues so that the baddie spawns on him. And we're going to get Ruth Turner. So she uh, it, she spawns at St. Mary's Hospital, and after she's evaded, added to the victory display. She's five, very tough evade, uh, victory point one. So there we go. Spawn her there at the hospital. Okay, so that was uh, all three of Wendy's actions. Now she's got a test of Frozen Fear. I don't have any willpower icons unless I want to throw her amulet, which I don't. So we beat the skulls at least. In general, beating the skulls is a reasonable metric for like how, how, how well am I doing on this test. It's kind of a good gut check. Am I beating the skulls? All right, plus one. So Frozen and Fear is gone. So she can, at least we got that victory point and uh, we're short up there, so in good shape. Okay, let's draw some cards, get some resources. Rolling gets a guts, nice. And a resource. And Wendy will draw and get a lucky. That is good to have. Might be an avenue towards evading Ruth Turner. Okay, so there we go. Still no Lee of the Luca, though. All right, so now the agenda advances. And uh, we have Arkham's equivalent of a jump scare. Because <laughs> you flip it over and it's the masked hunter who spawns engaged with the prey, who is the person with the most clues. He is a 442, but not really a 442 because he gets plus two health per investigator. So he's got eight health. Uh, while you're engaged with the masked hunter, you cannot discover or spend clues. So, okay. So he's gonna engage with Roland. And then, uh, that's the reason I wanted to have the shotgun out. Okay, and then uh, we have to draw uh, encounters. Roland will get hunting night gods. Oh my goodness, life just got complicated for Roland. All right, so it's a it's a three four one, but the one is a de is deceptive because while attempting to evade the hunting night god, double the negative modifier for each revealed chaos token. It's very hard to evade. We're probably just gonna have to tank some damage here. I'm gonna move Ruth Turner over here and the. Uh, obscuring fog so we can tell what's going on here also uh something that people uh may not realize when the when the uh, agenda advances we should have removed all doom from play so this acolyte is now pretty inert although there are cards that will put doom on him okay wendy will get <laughs> hunting shadow so she takes two more damage which now starts to get a little bit nervous she's that she can only take three more damage Okay, so we have problems here, kind of. <laughs> okay, we could take out the Hunting Night Gaunt, the Shotgun Blast. Can we take out the Masked Hunter? Let's see, we would be at four, five, six, seven, eight before, nine before with the um, Vicious Blow. I feel like we could take out the hunting. Well, let's take out the, yeah, let's, let's work on the, uh, the masked hunter. So we're gonna take a shot with the shotgun. We are at, he get, we get three from the shotgun and one from beat cop. So that gets us up to eight and then vicious blow will get us up to nine. And if we hit, we'll do an extra point of damage. So we're at nine before, but we want to hit as high as hard as we can. Um, the higher we do, the more damage we're gonna do, so. Okay, uh, highest number of enemies of uh, Doom on Occultist in play, which is zero. So we actually, uh, we were at, again, we were at five up. So we do five damage plus the Vicious Blow. We do six damage in one shot. So we'll, uh, we'll take that. Okay, we're gonna use our last shot of the shotgun on the Masked Hunter. At, uh, we're at four up now. Mm 
minus three. So we succeed by one, which means we only do one damage to him. Wah, wah. So now I've got a real decision to make. Because I could discard, I could do a damage to the beat cop. Oh, well, I have two dodges in hand here, actually. Yeah, I think I will discard the Beat Cop, do a damage to him, and that will kill the Mass Hunter, because he takes eight damage. And that puts him into the victory display. So we're at three into the victory display of the six that we're trying to get. Pardon me, I just, I, I, I was going to do a play where I was going to play the extra ammunition and play dodge so that I could tank the hunting night gun, uh, so I could not have the attack of opportunity from the hunting night gun, and I just realized that I can't do that because if I do, then uh, I won't have the resources to play my extra ammunition that I wanted. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but anyway, we're going to try, I'm going to go ahead and just try to punch the hunting night gun at uh, one up. We're beating the skulls again. Zero. Okay, so we do one damage <laughs> to the uh, Hunting Night Gaunt. Yay. All right, so the uh, Hunting Night Gaunt will do a damage and a horror to, uh, to roll, and I'm not going to play dodge on it because I'm going to do that later. Uh, I want to be able to make sure I have enough resources to play the extra ammunition. All right, so uh, we will draw a card. We get a card dog. Nice. With three resources. Wendy. We'll draw. Abandon it alone. Take two direct horror and remove all the cards in your discard pile from the game. Well, fortunately, I don't have a lot there that I wanted to keep along, around, so that's good. Now I can play her. Uh, I can play her uh, her amulet and recur stuff and be pretty confident about it. And she's at twelve resources, so you know I just need something to spend it on. I swear, I do plan to spend things with her. I just, I don't know. hasn't worked out. Okay, we are at uh, 1 of 8 Doom, and uh, Roland will get an Obscuring Fog. So we will attach that to our location. It's plus 2 Shroud. There's no clues there, so that's pretty good. Wendy will get Mysterious Chanting. Place 2 Doom on the nearest Cultist. That will be the Acolyte. And if there wasn't one, we'd have to go find one. Had to readjust my camera there. Sorry, it got wonky. All right, so what am I going to do? Let's see. Uh, we'll start with Roland, who will uh, spend two resources and uh, play. He'll play dodge to dodge the hunting night gaunt's attack, and the the two resources he'll play will be extra ammunition. This is the play I was going to go for earlier. Um, place three ammo on a, on a folk firearm asset controlled by an investigator location. So that would be shotgun. So we are back in business. We are shooting at the hunting night gaunt. So we're at 7v3. So for a good token pull. Okay, minus one. So that's 6v3. We do three damage to him, and he is dead. All right. So I don't really have a way of killing... I mean, I can shotgun the, um, the Acolyte. I would rather do it with a, with a guard dog, if I can get the guard dog in play. So, and I think we got time. We're only at three of eight doom. So I'm actually going to take two, uh, one resource, and the next turn I could take a resource, play the guard dog, and move in on the acolyte. Okay, so we took a resource. Maybe I shouldn't have played that dodge, honestly. I just saved the resource, taking the damage and the horror, but whatever. Okay, Wendy, keep like wanting to play this, look what I found. But, uh, man. All right, um, I think as soon as we get this lucky, as soon as we end up playing a lucky, I'm gonna end up uh, playing her amulet to recur that. Okay, so Wendy's gonna move into Rivertown. Probably get this clue. 
We're up by two. Minus three. Okay, I'm gonna spend two resources to play Lucky to get that clue. <clears throat> then I'm going to spend two resources to play Wendy's Amulet. You can play the topmost event in the discard pile as if it were in your hand. Now, if you play an event, uh, place it on the bottom of your deck instead of in your discard pile. So it just means we have, right now, a permanent lucky in our hand. So we can lucky pretty much anything. And upkeep. Roll and we'll get a machete. Okay, so that's a good card to have once we run out of ammo on our shotgun. Wendy gets a perception. Okay, we're set to do some clue getting. She's at nine resources. We are at four of eight doom. And Roland will draw. Distant voices. Okay, you cannot play assets or events. Well, that means we can't play our guard dog. So, do we walk in and try to punch this guy? I don't know. Do we shotgun blast an acolyte? Seems... Seems a bit over the top. <clears throat> and Wendy will get on Wings of Darkness. Test four agility. If you fail, take one damage, one horror, then disengage. So that damage is actually a problem. But I don't have a way to boost agility. So I guess we're just going to take this damage and horror. Um, I will probably lucky this if we can, though. just because her damage is getting so rough. And Leo DeLuca is how, who I would normally soak it with. But he has not uh, made an appearance this game. Okay, that is highest number of Doom on a cultist enemy in play, which is two on the Acolyte. I will go ahead and... Um, I will go ahead and spend a resource to play Lucky, and it goes into the bottom of my deck. Okay. So, we could go in and sneak attack that Acolyte. We could also go in and shotgun blast the Acolyte. Neither of these things, I feel like, are like super good plays. Oh, and we've also got uh, Ruth Turner to, to, to consider, though. Uh, I've forgotten about her. I don't really have a good way to evade her. A shotgun blast would take her out nicely, though. So maybe there is a play for Wendy to go in she could commit two sneak attacks to this Acolyte. I mean, she could go in and sneak attack him. Why not? All right. Oh, but I kind of prefer... I think Wendy's just going to go get more clues. I think that's what Wendy's going to do. We're at four of eight doom. It's probably okay. As long as we don't get like a mysterious chanting. Gosh, I wish, I wish we could get Leo. All right, um, so Wendy will move into East Town. We've got two clue, uh, two shroud, two clues, and while you're East Town, you can reduce the cost of each ally asset by two. So if Leo were making a prank appearance, now would be the time, Leo. I feel like we're pretty good shape to get four cultists. So, as long as nothing goes horribly wrong here. And we can spawn another one. We've got actually three clues, so we will uh, investigate. Again, we can just uh, play Look What I Found. Up by one. Three, V, two. Okay, plus one. Well, we got a clue. This is... Look What I Found makes you succeed more tests than you would imagine. Okay, so we'll spend two clues. And we'll spawn the next cultist. I just spawn four clues. And we get Wolfman Drew. He spawns in downtown. When he attacks, heal one damage from him. He is a 4-4-2. Four, four, Alright. He spawns here in downtown. So, 
Wendy could actually kill him very, very easily. So, uh, with her, were there sneak attacks? So I'm not too worried about rolling, rolling that. He could go in and punch the Acolyte. He'd only be up by one. Does he have anything he can commit? <clears throat> I mean, the machete. Maybe we can draw a card to get one icon. Uh, so we can play Guard Dog next turn. I mean, we could commit the Guard Dog. And then we'd be up by two. I think I'm going to draw a card to see if we can get a good icon. This is, this Dissonant Voice is so rough. But I mean, of course, we could take two swings at one up. Oh, but the, the Skulls are worth negative two, so we really want to be two up. Yeah, he's going to draw a card. Roland will draw a card. Gets cover up. Okay, so put cover up in uh, to your threat area with three clues on it. Okay, when you discover one more clues at your location, discard that many clues from cover up instead. All right, so this will slow us down. Uh, if it's still in play at the end, we take a trauma, and maybe I'm just okay with taking a trauma. We've only got one more scenario to go. All right. So we'll draw another card. 45 automatic. Okay. So we drew, we drew. And next turn, we're just going to want to put in the uh, guard dog. Yeah. I think we'll draw one more card. We will draw an unexpected courage. I wish I'd had that earlier. Okay. That's it for that. So we will draw upkeep. We get the mag glass for Roland. He's up to three resources. Wendy, we get will to survive. Okay, well that's so. This is a really this is a I spent a lot on this one. It's fast. Play only your turn until end of turn. You do not reveal chaos tokens for any skill test performed. So that's a pretty nice card. And super fun. It, uh, it feels like cheating when you play it, honestly, because you're just like, oh, hey, I don't have to pull any chaos tokens. All right, so we are now at one, two, three, four, five of eight doom. False lead. If you have no clues, false lead gains surge. He has no clues. So this is the one that can make you drop all your clues. You have to test for and elect for each point you fail by, uh, drop one of your clues at your location. So this is why I've been trying very hard not to have clues on them, to get them and spend them as quickly as possible. Surge, which I guess we haven't gone over before. So Surge just means you draw another card. So we draw another card, which is Rotting Remains. Okay, well, we can toss Guts at this. We don't have much soak on Rotting Remains, so we want to pass. Oh, this Dissonant Voice has gone away. Um, we could throw an Unexpected Courage. We could throw a Dodge at it. But if we take, like, one horror, that's probably okay. So three Willpower. We're, at, we're up by two. We're beating. We're beating the. We're beating the. Uh, beating the skulls. Okay. Uh, skulls. Okay. So we pass this. Take no horror, and we get to draw a card from guts. We draw, working a hunch. Okay. That is actually pretty cool. And Wendy will get. She gets her own rotting remains. Uh, horror probably isn't a huge deal for her. So we will probably just tank it. We're going at 4v3. It would be less of a deal if she could... Uh... Find Leo. 4v3. Okay, that is minus two. Place one Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. So she does, she takes one horror from that. She failed by one. She's at three. She has four sanity remaining. And we have to put a doom on the nearest cultist enemy, which is Wolfman Drew. So Wendy will go first. She's going to move in on Wolfman Drew. This is a downtown location. This is a three shroud, two clues, and it has the action to gain resources. Gain three resources. No victory point. That's sad. Okay, he comes engaged with her. I just realized a flaw in my plan. But uh, it's okay. We are going to uh, evade up by two. 
and with the intention of pitching a card to redraw if we need to. Tentacle. Okay, well, we will pitch uh, Sneak Attack, which then we can play out of our discard if we uh, with Winnie's Amulet. So we're redrawing up by two, still on the survey. That is minus three if you fill place one of your clues on your location. Okay, so this is a problem here because he will do two damage to her. We did not want that. So Roland, but let's see, that puts her at one health remaining. And if she were to get false lead, but if we're at one, two, three, four, five, Dune, this is, this is unfortunate. Roland can take the two damage from Wolfman Drew. He can move in. He could shoot with a shotgun, but he'd want to engage first. So I almost wish Wendy had played well to survive. She can next turn though, but I don't want her to eat that two damage. I guess there's nothing to it but to walk in and blast Wolfman Drew. It's just unfortunate about that acolyte. So I think I'm gonna make a risky play here and risk the auto fail. No. no. Okay, so we're going to move in. Action. We're going to engage Wolfman Drew. And then we are going to unexpected courage with the shotgun. We want to be able to take him out in one shot if possible. Um, so that puts us at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine before. And I think Wendy will go ahead and commit the sneak attack. A 10 before. Oh no! Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, that is Arkham. And that may be the end of it for our... Well, we have one more shot, right? No, we don't. We're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Whew. Man, that was Arkham. Okay. We may not be able to... We may not be able to... Uh, to get out of here. All right. Up, uh, so, so Roland takes two damage from Wolfman Drew. He'll draw a card, he gets overpower, and a resource. Um, and Wendy will get a card. Hey, look who decided to show up. It's Leo. <laughs> and a resource. All right. And now we are at, so let's count the doom. We're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we're one doom away. All right, we get Crypt Chill, so we can lose our shotgun to this very easily. Do we have any way to not lose our shotgun to this? I don't think so. So this has gotten very problematic. Oh, this has gotten very problematic. Can Wendy throw anything into this? She could throw Will to Survive, but I think we just have to be happy with the fact that we're losing our shotgun. So we're going at 3v4. Minus one, we have to lose our shotgun. Sad times. That auto fail just really wrecked us. Okay, and then Wendy will get Wizard of the Order. Okay, so he's going to spawn in an empty location. And 
he is going to one doom uh, at the end of the round place one doom on the wizard of the order gross okay i think we will put him here and then he gets a doom so we are advancing here unless i can figure out a way to not make us advance which i think i can do i think i can do yeah all right so Wendy's going to go first. She's going to spend her five resources on Leo DeLuca, which will give her a soak, and it will give her extra actions. So she has three actions remaining. So she will engage Wolfman Drew. She will evade him. At 4v2. Alright, and we will pitch Perception to try again. Okay, it's the highest number of Doom on a Cult's enemy in play, which is two from the Acolyte. So he is evaded. We, um, so we Played Leo, we engaged, we evaded, we have one action left. We will play the top card of her discard is the sneak attack, which will spend two resources to play sneak attack to do two damage to Wolfman Drew. So um, <coughs> Roland will spend three resources to play Guard Dog. Okay. And so the Guard Dog. He's, he can take three damage and one horror. When an enemy deals an attack damage, uh, deals damage to guard dog, deal one damage to the attacking enemy. All right, so Roland, that was his first action. Second action, he'll move here. The Wizard of the Order will come on to Roland. He will move, taking the attack of opportunity from the Wizard of the Order, which puts a damage on guard dog, and then puts a damage back on the Wizard of the Order. Okay, so now it's the enemy attack phase. The Wizard of the Order will do an attack, and on which will put a damage on Guard Dog. And it will attack back to the Wizard of the Order. So he goes away, and Roland can get a clue. Um, do we want... Yeah, we'll take the clue. I don't think we're going to be able to do cover-up. And we'd like to be able to spawn that last cultist. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, the Acolyte will hit for damage. Because that he also got engaged with Roland. Which will kill Guard Dog, but it'll kill him too. So we at least cleared off that Doom. And now we're back at a more manageable spot as far as that's concerned. So. Cool. Alrighty then. Uh, now we'll do upkeep. Roland will draw a Beat Cup. It's a level zero beat cop that, that uh, doesn't allow you to ping for damage. You just have to discard him. And then we get an unexpected courage for Wendy. And a resource. Okay. Uh, Wolfman Drew. I should have readied him. He engages back on Wendy. All right. And we are now at one, two, three, four, five, six of eight doom. And Roland will draw. Okay, you must either spend one clue or take two damage. We'll take two damage. We can handle some damage. He's got nine damage soak, so... Or nine damage. He's got nine health. And Wendy, Dissonant Voices. You cannot play assets or events. Well, that was kind of my way of killing that guy. So, this is a problem. We still got Ruth Turner down here, who's got four health. Hmm. So how are we going to do this? Excuse me, I lost track of what I was doing there. Wendy's distant voices here. So she can kill Wolfman Drew next turn. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll be okay for one turn. Maybe she plays the flashlight and tries to get 
those two clues and then we could potentially spawn yeah okay so Roland is gonna have to take two resources and play machete so he has a weapon so that's gonna be the entirety of Roland's turn is to take two resources and put out machete okay so that is what Roland has done uh, Wendy's going to have to evade Got four actions. My goodness. All right. Well, we could will to survive, then we could evade, evade, and get. We can evade, get two clues, and spawn the remaining cultist. No. We would still need one more clue. But we'll go ahead and do it. Although, actually. Yeah, because we do not want to commit. Look what I found. Yeah, we'll just do it so we get the clues. We'll play Will to Survive, which will allow us to not draw a token. So we will evade Wolfman Drew. We cannot sneak attack him. Actually, could we just hit him? No, because we're at one. <laughs> that's that one, one, one windy combat. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's not a thing. Um, we will investigate, investigate to get these two clues. We don't draw tokens, so we're good. Um, and I think I will just, I will take a resource so we can sneak attack next turn. And so this new voice is really hurting us. Okay. All right, so uh, end of the turn, Wolfman Drew. Fortunately, we don't have to worry about uh, the, um, the false lead because we've gone through both of those. And this will go away. We'll draw a card for Roland. He gets... A perception and a resource and Wendy will get another look what I found so the problem with committing look what I found for the icons is that uh, that um, that then it goes on the top of her her pile and we can't use our sneak attack so all right we are at six seven of eight doom because of Wolfman Drew, and we will draw. Roland will get. Oh, I thought. I guess there's three false leads. So he's going to drop his clue there. Which. Okay. So what can we commit to this? We have. Uh, didn't we have. Yeah, we have perception and a working a hunch. So we will just go at three, four, five, six, seven to beat four. Up by three is pretty good odds. Because we're not going to have enough resources to play Working Hunch anyway. All right, that is negative two. Place uh, one Doom on the nearest cultist enemy, which is Ruth Turner. So it means we have to get Ruth Turner this turn, or else we just advance, and it's going to be a bad, bad thing. Yeah, not too happy about that. Huh, but we did pass. Oh, wait. It's if you fail. So we don't have to do that. Okay, cool. No, it is not if you fail. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But we do get a draw card. So we will get Roland's uh, 38 special, which actually we're not going to play because we've got the machete, but having those combat icons is going to be super important. So, okay. Uh, and then we did keep our clue. And then Wendy will get a hunting night gone. Of course she does. All right, so that's going to be an enemy that's going to have to be dealt with. Okay, so Wendy can definitely do Wolfman Drew. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have to kill both of them. So I think Roland goes in and kills Ruth Turner first. We're going to be going at three, four, we can go five, six, V2. So only the auto fail. This is, people say, don't, don't say nothing, only a tentacle, but that's what I'm going to say. So here we go. We can see if it goes. So Roland's going to move in, return, and it uh, goes on him. We've got to do four damage to her. Okay. So uh, first action, we will attack with a machete, committing overpower, which is going to get us to four, five, six, seven, V2.
Okay, that is, I saw that red. <laughs> That's minus one, so she takes two damage. Okay, we're gonna go again. Zero, okay, so she is gone, her doom is gone. And we add her to the victory display. So we've gotten four. Four sets us up so good for the next scenario. So I uh, can't complain about that. All right. So that is Roland's turn. And, we, and I guess we can uh, we can get a clue, which enables us to spawn the last cultist, right? Yes, it will. Okay. Um, maybe we can get all the cultists. That would be pretty amazing. All right. So Wendy is going to evade Wolfman Drew. She's going to commit an expected courage to this. She's at 6v2. Okay, that is minus three. If you fail, place one of your clues on your location. She did not fail. Wait, we should have taken a resource. We somehow did not take a resource. Because I know we were going to have to... Because uh, I took a resource at the end of the last action. I hope I drew a card for her. Okay, let's look what I found, right? Anyway, because I needed to have two resources for this to work. All right, so Wolfman Drew is exhausted. Then we can spend two resources to play Sneak Attack out of her discard. To, do, to defeat him. So his doom goes away. And he goes into the victory display. So we are we're running tight. Okay. Um, we will try to evade the hunting nine gaunt at four v one, which is not ideal. But let's see if we can beat it. Four v one because we have to double the negative modifiers. <sighs> Auto fail. All right. We will uh, pitch the. Uh, We'll pitch uh, Look What I Found to try again. The skull is zero, so actually we do uh, manage to um, do that. So we can move away, but what good would that do us? Not much. So we might just spend our clues, I think, to spawn the last cultist. Yeah. All right. So we will spend two clues, or four clues, and we will spawn the last cultist, which will be Peter Warren, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Peter Warren at the Miskatonic uh, University. He's three health. He's uh, a two fight, and you can spend two clues to parlay and add him to the victory display. So, which I don't see how that could possibly happen. All right, so it's time for upkeep. We get an overpower from Roland, which he'll need to do that damage against Peter Warren, and a resource. And Wendy will get Cunning Distraction, a little late for that. And a resource. I think Night Gaunt goes back on her. Okay, we are at seven of eight Doom. Did I draw a card for this overpower? I think. I don't remember. If I didn't, that's an error. It's a mistake because it's not an optional trigger uh, to uh, to draw not draw cards from the overpower. I think I was just so excited that I hit her that I probably forgot. So. We'll just, uh, you know, everybody makes mistakes, and that may have been one of mine. All right, so we're drawing card on Wings of Darkness. Okay, uh, this isn't too big a deal. He's going to fail this for sure, um, but he's just going to move to uh, Rivertown, which is just as, as well as where he is. So testing for agility, he's at 2v4. That is negative three. He fails, takes the damage and a horror. Okay. 
and he moves to Rivertown. All right, and then Wendy, we get the last card of the encounter deck, and she gets Mysterious Chanting, place two doom on the nearest cultist, which would be Peter Warren. But it is the Witching Hour, it doesn't matter, although the Witching Hour, I don't know if you'd really call that when it's the end of the scenario. So we have to go in and do this this turn. There's no other way. So, um, or we could just resign now, and that's the safe thing to do, but I'm not going to do the safe thing. So let's, uh, let's give this a shot. No guts, no glory. So Roland will move in. And then Peter Warren will engage him. He can't miss either of these shots or else the Doom clock is going to run out and there's nothing we can do. So, all right, so we are going at four. We'll commit overpower to be five, six. B2. All right, that is negative two. Place one Doom on the nearest cultist, which is him. So he's going to get three Doom. He is working overtime. We have one damage left. Can we do one damage to him? Can we do one damage to him? We do draw a card from the overpower. I will remember this time. If only we had our beat cop out, we could just ping him. All right, so we are at four to be two. We will commit Roland's 38 special, which has two combat icons on it. And we are at, oh, I forgot about the machete, actually. I wasn't even counting that. I'm actually up by five, but it doesn't matter. Gosh, getting all six is so amazing. It would be so amazing, you guys. Like, this is so rare. We're so rare for it to ever happen. So rare for it to ever happen. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Of course. Of course. Oh, my goodness. All right, so we miss. And now I have to look, does Wendy have any way of getting there and doing a damage? Oh, does she, does she have any way of getting there and doing a damage? Uh, let's see. So she can move once, move twice. Oh, if only I had committed my double icons. So I can get her up to 2v2. And that's it. Okay. So she moves once, moves twice, and then attack, attack. Okay. So she will move once. She gets hit by the Hunting Night Gaunt for a damage and a horror, which we'll put on Leo. Okay. And then she'll move again. We will kill off Leo. We still have, we took his action first. You take his action, his free action first, so we're still okay. Now, she is swinging at 1v2, and we will uh, commit Beat Cop from Roland to be 2v2. Actually, she will commit Cunning Distraction to be 3v2. She's up by one, and we can pitch two cards, but we're not being the skulls. Negative one! Oh my gosh! <laughs> she did the last damage to him. Oh, oh my goodness. What a play. Oh, he goes into the victory display. Oh, that's unbelievable. <laughs> Wendy, with the clutch, with her one fight, one up. Oh, all right. Guys, I'm sorry. That's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy that, uh, you know, getting all six cultists is is something else, especially on a play like that. I, you know, well, anyway, all right. So we uh, we do get to advance. I uh, and read the uh, back of the act. I'm not going to do that as a special thing. You very, get to read it very rarely, but I will read it. Um, and then anyway, so we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six victory points. Uh, from these guys, and I believe we did not get the victory point from here. Um, we did get the victory point from there, so we got seven victory points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven victory points. That's uh, 
Oh, an eight from the graveyard. Eight victory points. So anyway, uh, again, getting all six is a very rare thing. I got very lucky. Who knows if I made some rules errors along the way to maybe put a big asterisk by it. But I'm still happy. I still feel like, um, given that tentacle, that this worked out, you know. <laughs> uh, I think it showed off a lot of the game. And hopefully you enjoyed that tutorial So and the uh, playthrough. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time on Winging It.